It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Sean Daniel, who is the head football coach at Simpson University. And big news today, coach, as the Frontier Conference has invited and welcomed in Simpson University to be its 14th football playing school. Congratulations on that. Let's just start there, coach. How does that feel? It's, you know, it's exciting. I remember uh, in my interview process before I was hired, we were talking about conferencing. You know, I brought it up and they were, you know, Frontier was always in the picture, always in the forefront of what Simpson wanted and what Simpson needed in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And so when I got hired and went from there and then kind of moved on, um, there was a big shakeup. You know, we really thought that we would be in in 2024, uh, but with the conference commissioner kind of stepping down, a new one coming in. And then with, presentation and Iowa Wesleyan uh, closing the doors, Waldorf jumping to go into the, the G packet left the Dakota schools out. So it became a, Ooh, hold on. Let's not just get Simpson. Let's see if we can, you know, make this team, uh, you know, make this conference bigger. And uh, Dr. Crawford did a great job. I and mean, he was the, the spearhead of this whole thing. Cause it kind of got thrust on him right when he got hired with the whole uh, North star kind of dissolving. And yeah. so, uh, he did a phenomenal job, and he's and he just kept saying, "Hey Simpson, just be patient, be patient." And and, and uh, not a not a great suit of mine. Uh, but <laughs> and so in 2024, you know, we we got our inaugural year coming up, and we got you know we're independent. You know, we got you know our our ten games, but getting that conference seal in 2025, it kind of feels like you know, well, you're a real program. You're solidified. You're 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 viewed that way. You're you know, it's kind of that seal of approval, and. Uh, Very excited about what the future holds because of that. Dr. Crawford was there on campus just a few moments ago as you all announced this and and the big press conference there. I know he has to to fly out and and take care of of business elsewhere, which, of course, now his conference is in the past little bit spread over into three time zones and uh, so many more schools there. So we'll we'll let him go. But having said that then, uh, Coach, how, how big is this now for not only for the the football program, because you and I've talked about this before, but also for the university itself. You know, it's it, you know there's strength in numbers. Now that we're a 14 team conference, the largest I think the largest NAI conference out there, and the fact that as big as we are, it you know it solidifies us. But you know, Southern Oregon is just two hours up the road. You got Eastern Oregon College of Idaho, which North, but you know. It puts a seal of approval. Another one, we're the only NAI football program in the state of California. That is it. And so it's anything about building up Simpson University, one, starting a football program, getting, you know, AD and the coach and the staff and then getting players. And now getting a conference approval and a conference, we can go out on the recruiting role, say, hey, this is who we play, when we play, all that stuff. And people can look forward to the next 25, 26, 27, 28, what those years look like when we're recruiting that class. So it makes everything a lot easier in the recruiting aspect um, and, you know, and fundraising and, and, and Hey, this is who we play and where we're going and, and, and getting that, the money that way, it, it really helps out. It makes it, I kind of like the stamp, the done where it's it. Okay. Now let's focus on winning some games. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> let's get, now let's see, let's get some players and let's focus on winning now. Okay. And now uh, programming note, then we want to have coach Daniel back on the summit prior to the start of the year and talk a little bit more about football in particular and and winning those games. But before we get there, coach, just to talk about this a little bit more, because I don't want to get past the winning games. I know that's important. That's a big deal. And you have to get that done. And and you've already said you may not be that patient. So uh, you want (laughs) to... You want to get it done quickly for your school. It's an, it's the only NAI school in California with football, but I mean, take it a little bit farther. I I mean, for the, for the state of California itself, you know, four year institutions, there are no D two schools with football in the state of California, some D three schools, but that's a totally different animal when, especially when it comes to scholarship money or the lack thereof, uh, D one schools. And some of them, I think, you know, they, they've hitched their wagon to conferences back East. So, uh, with that in mind, for the state of California and even Northern California, talk about what this means. You, you know, for the state of California, it's such a massive state. I mean, we, you know, the biggest populated state and the most high school football. And there are no D2s. That's the saddest thing. And I grew up, you know, I grew up in California when there were, you know, and you think of all the programs that cut, you know, the Chico's, the Sonoma States, the Long Beach, all these programs, you know, 11 programs cut football in the late eighties and early nineties. And, and we're starting it. And so for the state of California, think about this, 
for our recruiting territory, you got to get in your car and drive nine hours south, nine hours south to the grapevine to find a Division three school that plays football. Nine hours. So we and you, there's thousands of high schools in between that. In the state of California, you know, there's 70-something junior colleges that play football. Mm-hmm. After they're done at the JUCO level, and I would think the JUCO football is the D2 football in the state of California, essentially, because these guys go there, and there's great football. But after the, after their two years at JC, where are they going to go? And so everybody, I mean, when I was in Nebraska, when I was in Missouri, when I was in Arkansas, I was flying out here recruiting. So now I can tell these guys, hey, just come up the road four or five hours. You don't have to worry about buying crazy winter gear. <laughs> you know, you know, you can play. Your parents can see. You can go home for Thanksgiving. You can go home for a long weekend. And so to have that, we we exclusively recruit California. We have guys from Reno, guys from Hawaii, guys from Oregon or Washington on our team. But ninety seven percent of our roster are California kids. Getting this conference approval in this conference still, which you think College of Idaho, Eastern, Southern Oregon, they came down to California heavily. Montana Tech, we recruit against these guys. Yeah. You know, now they come down here. They didn't have to worry about a Simpson. There was no other school trying to pluck them. Now we're plucking those kids mm-hmm. from those other schools. So now we plant our flag in these in this part of Northern California or in Sacramento or in that, and say, hey, there's no reason for you to leave the state. Come here. This is it right here. We're visiting now with Coach Sean Daniel from Simpson, and the Frontier Conference announced officially today that uh, it is welcoming in Simpson as its 14th football playing school. Of course, uh, we have uh, we need to note that uh, with the um, the disbanding of the North Star Athletic Association, other schools have come in, Dickinson State, four other schools in in a in a recent wave, and then you all coming in. The conference schedule for you doesn't begin this year, particularly, quote unquote, uh, it doesn't begin this year. However, you uh, your 10-team schedule, you have six conference opponents or future conference opponents on that, and it's a it's a nice schedule, Coach. It is. You know, we putting this together, you know, we – we've always been in line with the frontier conference from the very beginning, always letting them know what we're doing and asking for their help, you know, and they've done a phenomenal job. College of Idaho, Southern Oregon, reaching out to these guys and these, and these, these athletic directors and these, and these head coaches, they wanted to see our success because they wanted football on the West coast. So, you know, we're, we're playing Eastern Oregon. We're playing Southern Oregon. We're playing college of Idaho. We're playing Montana tech. Uh, we're playing Carroll and we're playing uh, Arizona Christian. So those are the six conference schools. So we're a scheduling partner for the Frontier for just those six. And then we have, of course, the other four uh, that we went out at PLU, Will Amit, uh, Pacific Northwest, and then uh, Ottawa, Arizona. Playing those guys is kind of a non-conference that way. But it's such a great example of, of, of the Frontier Conference reaching out, trying to help us find us get success, and then welcoming us full members in the conference. And the schedule is going to be, uh, I've seen the 25, 26 kind of preliminary schedule. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's crazy, but it's, it's a great, great recruiting tool, you know, great recruiting tool where we're going to be able to play. And you know, you said three different time zones, you know, in multiple different States and the travel, but the chance for these California kids to play here, but also to go to other States, have that experience to have a true college football. If we, you know, drive into Montana or fly into North Dakota or South Dakota, these guys are going to get an experience like no other NAI school can we provide here in California. Coach, I appreciate your time and, and thank you because I know it's a busy day for you. And I, I have just a couple more questions yeah. uh, regarding this, but let's, let's talk about the schedule then for the future because Dr. Crawford, you know, set up how it would be. And the Frontier Conference, as many people have surmised, it probably would be two seven-team divisions, a West and an East. And, and he joked to, you know, Simpson fans, there's really no question which division you're going to wind up being in. But with, with that in mind, six divisional games then and two crossover games. So just eight games that are locked in, you have the opportunity to, you know, fill in the schedule as you see fit from that point. But it's nice to have those eight games for sure. And then it's also with an opportunity for an automatic bid. That's going to mean one more automatic bid then as the Frontier Conference will have two different divisions. Yes. You know, getting the six, so our last six games of the year are going to be teams that are on the west side. Uh, They divide it up. And then two, of course, non-crossover. So the, the two teams, of course, 
you know that the Dakota schools are going to be on the East, you know, that's obvious. So we have a chance to go in and play in, you know, the Dickens and the, the Mayville, the Valley or the Dakota States, you know, we have a chance to play those guys, um, you know, play them. And then we may not see those teams again for another six years, you know, so play them home and away. And then you got to go through the whole other gamut of the other coaches. Then we could see them four or six years later. Um, so that's, it's kind of a cool. You look at it in that way, but you look at the big, uh, Power five schools, the divisions are so big. Sometimes you're not going to be able to see that many crossovers. So you're going to get an exposure in a way uh, that these players have, 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 that know their conference can provide. That we that, that's one thing about Frontier. We provide that 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 exposure that these guys cannot do, and so it's great. And then like, but we're playing PLU, and they have done a great job. There are schools on the West Coast, some D threes that would like to st to stay in place because we're four or five, six hours away, nine hours maybe. Mm -hmm that they are like, Hey, let's save our budget. Let's play you. We don't have to fly to Texas or anywhere. So we can keep that going in that Avenue. Um, so it's, it's, it's unique in that way. And, but there may be a crossover where we play a team on the West, you know, week zero and, and then week nine, you know, we could repeat if we needed yeah. to, because there's enough schools out here now for our support and everyone's vying for all of our success, not just Simpson success, but frontier conference success. Right. That's, that's the most important thing. Yeah, and that's that's the thing too. I mean, it's almost like a like a baseball midweek that that you could play a conference team. It just wouldn't count as a crossover game, right. but to fill up something on the schedule that you you get one of those teams from the east just to say, hey, listen, we we like to play you week zero, week one, something like that to get in. And I, I'm sure that that's feasible for you. I I have to ask then because you have the schedule ahead of you. Inaugural season's coming up. I know we'll visit again between now and August or or late August whenever it comes about, but. Uh, three home games on the schedule. Where are you playing your home games? Yeah. So we're playing at Foothill high school and thank God that they're a AD they're, 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 they're bored. Their, their staff, their head coach has done a phenomenal job. They have a great facility. So we're playing there. It's in Palisadro, which is no more than 14 minutes away. Uh, great facility. So we will be playing all of our games there. Uh, and the first part of the year will be at seven o'clock you know, because of the heat out here. And the rest of the time we'll do a one o'clock kickoff. But yeah, so uh, Foothill High School is where we're going to be. And then we're continuing to grow and build on this campus in, in the foreseeable future. I mean, we're, the goal is to get on campus full time. Don't know when that is. There's no timeline for that. But there is vision and there's direction and there's an idea. And, and, and I feel like, hey. There was vision to start football. There was vision to get in the Frontier Conference. Well, there's vision to build something on campus. So it's going to happen. I mean, there's no date or time on it, but I, I believe in Dr. Hall, our president, and I believe in our fundraising and the money we're bringing in for this, uh, that we're a blessed campus. And God has been good to us. God has blessed us. And we are continuing grateful for everything the Lord has provided. And, and everything you said that uh, was reflected by the, the administration earlier. And I, there's no doubt in my mind that God has provided for you all and, and uh, set things on a, on a great path for you to be in the right place at the right time. So Amen to that. that means that as of today, Simpson is in the Frontier Conference, the 14th football playing school for the Frontier Conference. Coach Sean Daniel, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit as we get to break a little news today. All right, Joe. Hey, God bless, man. This is exciting. Thank you so much.